when he gave me the news on that day, he said, uh, this is a blood cancer. I said, okay, what can you do for me? And he said, well, it's stage four. We can only treat it, but we can't cure it. There is no one size fits all, really, for talking to people affected by cancer. Feeling alone is very hard for people to understand. I've got two children. They were quite young at the time, so that was the hardest thing, to break the news to them. I guess I felt like I'd kind of let them down. One thing that people used to say a lot was, cheer up, you might get run over by a bus tomorrow. That just made me feel really like bad about myself for moaning, having a, you know, a bad day. Have you thought about your lifestyle? You, can you look at yourself in the mirror and say, that wasn't my fault, that sort of thing? It was extremely hurtful. The best support was ones that kind of um, looked to make light of the situation in, in, in the right way, obviously. The positive that so outweighs the negative that there along the way have been so many beautiful things that people have said. And when someone did say to me, you know what, it is okay to have those days where you, you do feel sad and you are scared, you know, it's okay. You know, I don't have to go around and maintain this outward appearance of being happy and feeling okay at all times. Just even something simple like, God, you're doing well, girl. All my football pals were, were all ringing me up and saying, come on, Chris, come on, you know, you, you're coming to football before the season ends. And that was such a great encouragement she took me to her very funky hairdressers because my hair started to fall out and my hair's always been a really big part of me and they just cut my hair into this sort of 80s look and it was, it was so beautiful and I came away just feeling like what a great start to a horrible journey. I didn't have any hair and it's grown back again so it's great, it's touched it again, touched it more.